and welcome to another episode of Tick Tick Boom. Boom. My name is Maud Garrett. I created GeekBomb.net. I'm Alicia Malone from Malone's MovieMinute.com. So as you probably guessed, we were at Comic Con. And as we hold each other as we cry ourselves to sleep from exhaustion, we thought we'd relay to you some of the most unexpected, exciting news from both TV and movies from Comic Con. Yeah, because obviously there were a lot of big reveals at Comic Con that we expected to see that we are super excited for, goes without saying. For me, Interstellar, Sin City 2, A Dame to Kill 4, Batman vs Superman, Age of The Ultron. Avengers, Age of Ultron. All great stuff, but I will say there wasn't any surprises with those, so we're going to pick something that you might not have heard of until now. So, mm. Morty, do you want to kick off with TV? Yes, I am doing TV this time because games is painfully void um, at, with the presence at Comic-Con, which is what E3 is all about just last month. So, I'm going to tackle the TV side of things. Coming in at number three, I was looking forward to any kind of Game of Thrones news. I was stoked that I saw a George R.R. R. Martin in the wild, uh, but there was a panel, yes, the cast, Yes, the author. Um, and we also saw David Benoit and Dan Weiss. They announced new cast members for season five. Some of those include Keisha Castle Hughes. I'm Keisha Castle Hughes, and I'll be playing the role of Obara Sand. And also a guy called Jonathan Price. And I will be playing High Sparrow. And I'm very excited to be joining the cast of Game of Thrones with this new and fascinating character. And he's played this role a couple of times before in his career, so you know he's going to do a great job. What's number three for you? Number three for me is a film by Kevin Smith, very different movie for him. It's called Tusk. Now, you might remember a few years back, Kevin Smith said he was going to retire from filmmaking after Red State, he'd had enough. Mm. Now he says he's not going to retire, he's only going to make movies that only he could make. And Tusk is definitely one that nobody else could make because... Nobody would want to make it. It is, in his words, quote unquote, fucked up. I don't think anybody ever would have made Tusk. I mean, that's and that's the only reason I kind of went back to it, because I'd stopped with Red State, but when we had this conversation on an episode of Smodcast that turned into what is Tusk, um, and it's laid out beat for beat, it's like a blueprint for what the movie would become. Like, I got so in, engrossed in the conversation and in the idea of seeing a movie about a guy who turns another guy into a walrus <laughs> that I start getting sad because nobody's going to make it because I realize it's so stupid nobody's ever going to make the movie. And then you also kind of hear it in my voice where I'm just like, you know what, man, like, if anybody, if nobody's going to do it, I, you know, I used to be a filmmaker. I could do these sort of things. Maybe I can make it. Now, I love that this film was made for not much money at all. It was shot in under 20 days. Kevin Smith wrote it in too, and this is his first horror, plus it has a lot of his signature humour, so I am looking forward to seeing that one. Take one for the team with that one. <laughs> Coming in number two, this is the uh, fusion that we have wanted since Family Guy came around. It is Family Guy meets The Simpsons. Yes, the family of choir hogs stumble across Springfield and hilarity ensues. There is a five minute clip that's up online at the moment, have a watch of that. My favourite part is when Peter Griffin becomes instant best friends with Homer Simpson. So here you go, 12! Ten, eight donuts. Mmm, donut. I think you and I are gonna get along just okay. Until their love of different beers kind of causes a massive rift and they have a biff up in true style where, you know, Peter Griffin usually beats up a chicken, this yeah. time it's Homer Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> Well, number two for me is a film called Project Almanac. I hadn't really heard anything about this one, but from the trailer, it looks like it could be good. It mm. could also not be good, but it's one that could go either way. Basically, it's very similar to Chronicle in that it's a sci-fi film which uses the type of filmmaking called found footage where all the characters and actors film it themselves and it's pieced together. I love found footage for sci-fi movies and for horror because it really adds a level of reality to the movie and this one tackles time travel as well and it looks quite confusing. The actors were laughing about having to keep everything straight in their head. We were out of sorts when we were shooting it because yeah. there's what is like, is this me now or is this me 30 minutes ago or like what? We need to have someone keep a chart of like yeah. where in time we were um, so that we didn't get too lost. But the other great thing about the movie is that these kids feel so real and the dialogue, most of it's improv and so I think when you watch it you get the sense like you're friends with them too. But I like that it's all new actors, fresh faces, 
And I think it could be good. Hoping for another chronicle. <laughs> uh, number one for me. Now this is uh, this is pretty big for me because I'm a big Arrow fan. Season three is upon us, and not only have we had a little look at the recap of the last season, but what's going to happen this season? We have a brand new villain, Alicia, and you've remembered him before from The Dark Knight Rises. Who Ra's al Ghul? Yes, was played by Liam Neeson mm -hmm. um, the first time around. Well, he is back. We don't know what he looks like, but we know that she's gone golden. Nice. But my favourite part is when, guys, Oliver finally asked Felicity out to dinner. Felicity, would you like to go out to dinner with me? The five years that I was away, I wasn't always on Lee and you. Where were you? This could be the start of something big. And Felicity cool. also gets a uh, flashback episode called Oracle. And if you are a DC fan, you'd know that Oracle is actually a superhero. She's in the Birds of Prey series. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, she is, but she's Barbara Gordon and she's a redhead who's in a wheelchair because the Joker broke her spine in the Killing Joke series. Yeah. So there's different people. I don't know if maybe this is just, you yeah, know. Yeah, Batgirl, isn't she? As well? Exactly. So I don't know if she's going in too far with this. Uh, might not be Felicity Smoke at all. Speculation. But that is my number one from the Comic Con unexpected, exciting news in TV. Well, my number one for movies is Mad Max Fury Road. Mm. And I say it was unexpected, not because I didn't think that it could be good, but just because this is a film that's been plagued by problems. And so we weren't sure how it was going to turn out. It's been 30 years since the last Mad Max film, well, almost 30 years. Dr. George Miller is back again, and let me tell you, the trailer looks incredible. I mean, this is a film that he's been trying to make since 2003. Wow. They shot it in 2012, and now, finally, it's the first time we've seen the footage. Mm. The mixture of practical effects and special effects look fantastic. The car crashes look mm. so real. Tom Hardy, I think, is an Sexy. excellent choice. He's an amazing actor. So is Charlize Theron. She has a cool robot arm. Mm -hmm. I love the pack of female warriors mm -hmm. that's in the movie One of them's well. Megan Gale. And it looks like it could be, you know, harking back to the original franchise while also looking forward and being quite, real, uh, quite futuristic. Mm. So I love that. I cannot wait for Mad Max Fury Road. That is my number one most unexpectedly exciting piece of film news from Comic-Con. Good news, guys, if you did want us to talk more about our Comic-Con experience, we actually did a live stream directly afterwards, so you saw all the exhaustion and the fun tales yeah. in full. Um, it is at YouTube channel, uh, which is youtube.com forward slash geek bombshells. So have a watch of that one. We answered your questions during it, including favorite cosplays, our reactions um, and opinions on the news that did drop, favorite interviews, and how we tackled the parties. With tissues yeah, not really. to our nose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, not really at all. But if you have another topic you'd like us to talk about, make sure you write below in the comments and make sure you like and subscribe to both our YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. I am youtube.com slash user. Movies are my jam. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Tick Tick News.